Now, you likely heard, have heard me say before that learning to read music is learning a different language. And uh, so one way that I like to apply it is to, I find the similarities between learning to read music and learning English. Um, so in English, when we are writing things down, we don't just block everything up into this big, huge chunk of words, right? We use things like spaces, periods, paragraphs, all that lovely stuff. Um, and if you are on the younger side and are just barely starting with English, um, you know, you can pick up any book and you can see how the words aren't punctuated, even if you have never had to actually write a paragraph or anything like that. Um, in music, our equivalent of that is measures. Um, and a measure is just a group of beats. Each measure is going to have the same number of beats in it. Um, and you can see I have another video that talks a little bit more about this. My time signatures video goes over um, how we know how many beats are supposed to be in each measure. Um, but in order to understand that, you have to understand what a measure is. Um, so basically a measure is separated by bar lines. In each bar line, when you see a bar line, it doesn't mean to stop playing. You keep going right over the bar line. Um, it just shows you that you have a clear group of beats. So here I have four beats in each measure. Uh, this little thing that this is a little example I wrote down has three measures. This is measure one, this is measure two, and this is measure three. It, um, complete with a double bar line, which um, in case you need a refresher, sim um, signifies the end of a piece. Um, so notice how it's not necessarily that I have the same number of notes, but I have the same number of beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, and a measure is just this little group between the bar lines. And that's really all there is to it.